What's interesting uh, about the allegation of aggravated assault is that an essential element of aggravated assault is uh, a fear that is subjective in the person that is being assaulted. Uh, that fear is a necessary element of aggravated assault. What happens when an individual has a gun in his or her pocket, uh, the person that is being threatened is not being threatened with the use of the gun. Uh, as a matter of fact, the individual does not see or recognize uh, that the individual is armed that is conducting the threat um, against that particular individual. Uh, and of course, this has to be absent bodily injury. Uh, if bodily injury takes place, even though the individual doesn't or is not aware of the presence of a, of an, of a deadly weapon, um, then we still have an aggravated assault if uh, the conditions of bodily injury, uh, as will be described in a moment, uh, are present. Um, an aggravated assault can occur um, in a number of different ways. Uh, the code specifies that an aggravated assault can occur uh, against an individual who is a public servant and is conducting that um, uh, his service in, in the line of his, of his duty. If that uh, assault takes place, which would otherwise be a simple assault, that uh, would be raised to a to a um, aggravated assault and in fact uh, it gives rise to a first-degree felony uh, without that particular condition and the conditions that will be discussed um, momentarily uh, we still have a second-degree felony of the elements of serious bodily injury uh, or use of a deadly weapon are present uh, secondly an assault for instance against uh, a, a public servant uh, in retaliation for something that that public servant has done. Um, a peace officer who has made an arrest, uh, a threat against a member of that officer's family uh, can give rise to an aggravated assault, uh, putting it on the level of a first degree felony punishable by five to 99 years and or life in the penitentiary. Uh, as a first degree felony. Uh, retaliation against a person who happens to turn uh, a defendant in uh, for an offense that person has done or perhaps testified as a witness in a case or a juror uh, or a grand juror in a particular case. If, uh, if a threat uh, is made against uh, either of those uh, any of those individuals, then we have uh, uh, an allegation of aggravated assault. You can't, for instance, um, have an individual testify against you and the next thing you know, uh, that individual is um, being threatened by the individual against whom that person was testifying. A personal example, uh, I think, would be uh, appropriate to insert at this moment. Years ago, I was representing an individual who was charged with uh, assaulting his wife on the front porch of his home, and the next door neighbor uh, witnessed the assault, and the next door neighbor took the stand and was in the middle of testifying about what was going on. Um, my client was seated directly behind me and I was facing the witness during course examination. Uh, I see a juror motion to the bailiff and the judge stops the proceedings. The bailiff goes to the juror, the bailiff then goes to the judge. The judge excuses the jury. Apparently, unbeknownst to me, during the testimony of the next door neighbor, my client was physically with his finger cutting 
figuratively the throat of the witness of a dead man. Obviously he ended up being charged. Uh, uh, what turned out to be an assault case ended up with an additional allegation of an aggravated assault. Uh, any item that is capable of rendering uh, death or serious bodily injury to include physical disfigurement, um, any item that is, uh, has this capacity uh, and is used with the intent to create that particular atmosphere and in fact hurt that individual uh, can be considered to be a deadly weapon. Um, I've had situations where water can be a, a deadly weapon. A man's hand can be a deadly weapon. Obviously a two by four, uh, a sharpened pencil uh, that goes for the face. Um, it, it also is interesting that if I'm in an automobile, and, and this particular uh, example is most pertinent uh, uh, in today's climate, and I drive by a house, and I don't know if it's occupied or not, but I pull a gun and I randomly and recklessly fire that firearm into that house and it causes, without my knowledge, serious bodily injury to an inhabitant. That is a first degree felony. And uh, we often hear of drive-by shootings, first degree felonies. And again, those felonies are punishable if proven beyond a reasonable doubt by five to 99 and or life in a penitentiary. If a deadly weapon is alleged, then we have the ability of the court to make a determination that if an individual sentence, uh, let's say, is 30 years for a first degree felony, because of a deadly weapon finding, that individual will not come up for consideration for parole until one half the calendar period has been served by the person who is incarcerated. So just because we have an aggravated assault as opposed to a murder or a capital murder uh, doesn't make life any easier uh, for the defense lawyer uh, and particularly for the defendant facing the possibilities that the law carries with it.